Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm sharing with you my first in the series of 12 pieces of art through the year that will be based on the full moon. Today is the 21st of January and it's the full moon for January which is also called the wolf moon. It's also a super moon which means that the the moon is close to the earth at this time in the rotation. In addition to that, it is a blood moon because there it was a lunar eclipse on the 20th and will repeat again on the 21st. So my art has to do with all of that and it, it has to do with uh, myself going out um, with my family and watching the lunar eclipse last night and what it looked like from where I was. Uh, we watched the moon rise as well, which it as it came up over the mountains, it was huge. It just looked so large. And I and it's a combination of, of course, the moon being closer to the earth as well as just perspective. You know, what's what's in your view? It's not really as big as it looks, but anyway, it's really cool. It was it was fun to watch it last night. And we'll do that again tonight when it is actually the full moon. A completely full moon. It looked full last night, but I know there must just be a little bit off. So to start out my page, I wanted to make it look like nighttime. I'm using the Arteza acrylic paper pad, which um, I was sent by Arteza a while back and I never actually got around to using it. It's a spiral bound. It's got 16 pages in it, so it'll be enough to do my whole 12 part series of all the different moons and their names. And um, I painted it with a combination of the color Night from Dina Wakely and also the, uh, I think it's called Sapphire. So down at the bottom, I kind of made it a little bit lighter. I started dark at the top and moved to the lighter. Um, I did tape around the edges of the paper and over the spiral so that I won't get uh, paint on the spiral. And I also printed out a black and white image of a wolf because this is the wolf moon. It's also sometimes called winter moon and also chaste moon. Um, chaste is in like pure, you know, unsullied or whatever. There's different names of it. And, and these names come from all kinds of different things from, you know, Celtic legends and, and just, you know, they're from everywhere and I've just collected this information and I find it interesting and so I decided to do a series about it. So I was sitting on my driveway watching the lunar eclipse um, over my neighborhood and so as I was doing this I was looking at my surroundings as well as the moon because you can't just sit there and look at the moon the whole time. It, it, the, the eclipse lasts a while and your neck gets tired and so, you know, you got to put your head down and then put your head back up to watch it and bring it back down again. Also, your eyes get a little weird and um, things start to look kind of glowy. So I was looking around and what struck me last night, you, you just you just never know what's going to go on in my head. <laughs> uh, the house across the street from me has three circular, completely circular windows. Um, there's... There's one kind of low, then there's one way up high in the in kind of like this little turret looking thing. And then there's another one down below that that's actually in the garage area. And I was I was looking at the comparison between all those different circles and the circular moon and how the moon looked so big. And um, also the other thing that struck me was the colors. Of course, the when you have a lunar eclipse, the Earth comes in between the sun and the moon and then casts a shadow onto the moon because it's blocking the light from the sun. So our big fat earth is right in the middle, you know, blocking the, the moon's the moon's light, basically. And it turns it kind of an orangey red color, which is why they call it the blood moon, because of the color, for no other reason, I don't think, that I could read anywhere. But um where I live, there is a lot of this rusty red, orange, gold colors around. And even in my neighborhood, uh, we have to adhere to a certain set of <laughs> colors that we can paint our houses. Um, most of the houses in my neighborhood have red roofs that are made out of tile, kind of a terracotta orange co color tile. And 
the houses have to be painted some shade in between pink and tan and orange and terracotta, those type of colors, yellows. Um, there isn't any bright blue house. There isn't any purple house, unfortunately, because we have what's called an association, which um, they decide the color palette and we agree to it when we move in here. So, you know, there's other rules. You have to keep your house, your weeds weeded. I mean, it's a little bit of an, of an annoyance, but also it kind of helps to make, you know, you don't have any like really beat up houses in the neighborhood. It all kind of looks the same, which, which, you know, it's good and bad. It's just, just like anything, it's good and bad. <laughs> so, um, I, I wanted to make a house that looked similar to the one across the street that I was looking at with the three windows so that the so that you could get the synchronicity of um, how I was looking at these circular shapes as I was watching the lunar eclipse. So I got out a piece of deli paper that has been um, gel printed at some time. Actually, I think it was a cleanup uh, because it's got that kind of, um, well, I know that the main color of it is unbleached titanium or buff titanium, which I sometimes use to clean up the paint you know, I put it all over everything and clean up all those crusty bits. And that's what this piece of paper is. But it's it's similar in color to what we have, you know, the houses. It's uh, kind of a tannish, one of the lighter colors that we have. So then I also wanted, of course, to put the red roofs on, terracotta color roofs. So I got a different color, um, piece of gel printed paper. This one was using um, baby powder, I think. I've never, uh, I don't know. Actually, it's got some stripes in it, so it might have been when I printed with the self-adhesive vinyl, maybe, but it's the right color. I'm just basically looking for colors, and I like the way this pattern looks. It's much more interesting to me than just using an off-white piece of paper or a terracotta piece of paper. I want the pattern, the texture. Um, does, does it look exactly like the house? Is it perfect? No, of course not. This is... is an artistic impression of what I was seeing. It's it's not a photograph, it's art. It's what I saw. And um, so I drew it out kind of using a Stabilo all pencil, graphite pencil. And then I'm just kind of cutting the pieces and parts and gluing them on with some permanent glue stick. I know I'm gonna collage this whole thing on the page eventually, but I'm just putting these little bits on where the roof lines are that had multiple that house has multiple roof lines it's it's a pretty interesting looking house actually <laughs> it's better than ours but <laughs> you know just putting bits and pieces on there's the house the angle of the house is slightly uh turned away from me and i'm trying to to show that without like going real crazy with with drawing cubes and uh, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I have an, another piece of gel printed paper that I'm adding kind of some lines as well to make like kind of some, some shadows and shaded areas and beams and just stuff to make something that I think looks kind of like what I see. It's, it's not a duplicate, it's not exact, but it's similar to this house. And once I'm fairly happy with my, you know, the start of it, I start putting it on with some Liquitex matte gel medium and using an old credit card to smooth it down and try to get out some of the wrinkles. It's, it's going to be wrinkly. It's deli paper, but um, not too bad. I did tear a little piece of it off at the bottom by being too vigorous with trying to scrape the bubbles and creases out, but um, oh well. It's fine. It's just a collage. So um, I put the roof on. I've got, it's got two different roof lines there. And then it's got the, the different pieces and parts that stick out from the house. And it, this, this process took longer than I wanted. It's a pretty complicated looking piece of architecture over there. <laughs> so I didn't realize it was going to be quite as as crazy as it turned out to be, I'm just thinking, okay, draw 
draw a triangle, draw a square, and there you go, you've got a house. But this one is a little bit more crazy. And I really wanted the three circular windows. That was my main focus. So I continue with this other piece of uh, printed paper, just adding some, some different pieces around, adding a little bit more detail, just to make it look a little bit more visually pleasing. Um, you know, I'm saying um a lot today. I don't know why. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> but this was fun. I was uh, very focused when I was doing this, not paying much attention to anything except for you know, getting the getting the lines fairly straight and getting the pieces cut and get every, getting everything glued down. Then I got this piece of um, dark blues and blacks on a gel print, um, something from my six by six plate that might have been a cleanup. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's cool. I like the crusty bits. And so I'm making my windows cut out of this because it's nighttime, the house is dark, all the lights are off. And so I think for for us here, the lunar eclipse was about, about 10 o'clock. So the neighbors were asleep. Nobody was out. It was quiet. It was just us out there looking at the moon. They have a garage in the front of the house. So I've made like a little couple little pieces to indicate garage doors and I'm gluing down all my windows which are cut out of that dark print. I have a lot of prints. I haven't gel printed in a long time. I, it feels like a long time anyway and I just I have a ton of printed papers that I keep in a plastic container so I have, have had a lot to choose from lately. I don't have to be printing something directly for my project. I've got enough pieces that I can sort through and look for colors and um, use it in the way that you would use paint. Like if I need a piece of, if I needed some orange paint, I would need a piece of orange paper. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like that. So I've almost got my house done. I'm pretty happy with it. It's all collaged on there. Then I have my wolf. Now I've printed this on an inkjet printer and I wanted to make it large because it's a super moon, it's a blood moon, and it's a wolf moon. And I wanted the wolf to be a large piece. So, of course, if if that wolf was standing in front of the house over there, you would be running away. <laughs> He's huge. He's way bigger than the people would be. It's not proportionate, and that was intentional. I printed it on the inkjet printer in black and white, and then I used some uh, liquid text fluid medium. I put a few bits of that on there and then I use my brayer to roll over it to seal in the ink. Remember an inkjet printer, if you get it wet, it can't that stuff can run. I noticed that where I was putting the matte gel medium, it was dulling down the, sh the sheen of the paint. And so I went ahead and put it over the whole page. I just put the matte gel medium over the whole page. Now I've got some oil pastels. Um, these are the oil versions of, of pastel, not chalk, but um, greasy type ones. And I'm adding the rocks and sand and driveway in the front of the house. I've also cut out a couple different sorrel cactus shapes to add height to my composition. Um, I've got a lot of horizontal going on and not too much vertical. so. I needed some vertical shapes. I also, of course, have my big moon up there that's that's rising over the house. It did rise over the house just like that. That's exactly where it was on to the side like that, not right over the top of it. So um, I wanted to make sure it was in the right position. But then I have this extra space over here um, behind the house near their pool it was a tall uh, queen palm tree. So I went ahead and added that in to balance the composition using the oil pastels. And then I'm also using the oil pastels to color the blood moon um, just right before it completely eclipsed. There was a bright 
you know, one bright sliver and then you wait and then the sliver kind of starts coming on the bottom um, as, as the earth continues to pass between the sun and the moon. If you want to see this, you can go out tonight as long as it's you're watching this on the 21st of January 2019. <laughs> you can go out and watch this uh, super blood moon again tonight. Um, I would suggest you do. I'm not sure what time it'll be where you live because everyone lives in different places. But So I've decided I'm going to put my um, wolf right there in front of the garage doors. Uh, to ba for balance, we've got triangles going on here. Things that uh, your eye moves around so that you can, so your eye doesn't fall off the page. You know what I'm saying? This page, painting, whatever you want to call it, collage, mixed media piece, took me two and a half hours by the time I collaged on the house and cut the, everything and put stuff on and da-da-da, you know. Two and a half hours, so it's squished into around 20 minutes. <laughs> so then I decide it's time to start adding shadows. I have a uh, gray pit pin. This is a Faber-Castell product brush pin, artist pit pin that is India ink, and it works well over the sealed house. Um, of course, in the oily areas, it doesn't work as well. Like if I try to go over the oil pastel areas, it works okay, but um, it blends in a little bit more because of the way that stuff feels, the oil pastel feels. I don't use it very often for the simple reason that I don't like the way it feels on my hands. <laughs> I don't like that greasy, oily stuff, but it works well for this. Uh, here I took off the tape and I completely ripped my my uh, painting. Made me kind of mad. I need artist tape and I have just been using painter's tape because that's what I have. I never remember to go buy the artist tape. <laughs> and sometimes it rips the paper. This is the first time I've ever used this acrylic paper is what they call it. It's from Arteza. It's not watercolor paper, but it has a lot of... Um, tooth to it. It's rough paper so that you can do with like an acrylic painting on it. That was the intention. So I glued that piece back down. I put some more paint on it trying to fix that area of my painting which made me want to throw the, the uh, painter's tape across the room. I thought the yard needed a few more bushes and things so I tore some more little pieces of paper out of the same two prints that I used to make the two Soro cactuses and put those on with some permanent glue stick. I wasn't going to get the, the glue brush back out of the water <laughs> and just pressed all that down. It worked fine. It, it was able to go ahead and glue down on that um, oily surface of the oil pastel. So I was happy about that. I almost wondered if maybe it wouldn't stick. It would be too oily. So then I took some titanium white golden high flow fluid acrylic and splattered some stars in the sky. There was a lot of stars out. Where I live, there's not, the, the ordinance doesn't allow for there to be streetlights inside of my neighborhood because there is an observation telescope thing up on the hill across from where I live. So we don't have a really bright, you know, everything is not super bright around the neighborhood. It's dark. So we get to see a lot of the stars, which is nice. Of course, down in the city, it's bright as heck, but up here, it's, uh, everything is muted. So then I also wanted to add some warm tones to the wolf because that orangey colored moon would be shining on everything. So you need to make sure that you get some of that orangey color on everything. I also put a little bit of highlight on the roof line of the house where the, the moon would be shining on it and added a little bit of orangey, yellowy colors to everything. The palm tree, the cactuses, everything. And that way it would be like the moonshine if that moon was up there. There I'm fixing my line with a little bit of white marker. And I then used white markers, which 
I ended up switching to the Posca and even the Posca couldn't really do it. Trying to write over this oil pastel. It's not optimal <laughs> for trying to put a marker over the top. I wouldn't recommend it, but I, it worked out okay. I had to just keep cleaning the tip because the tip gets some of that oily residue on it and then it won't write. More highlights, more shadows, some highlights in the windows, some highlights on the roof line with the pin, you know, just bringing in some stuff like you do. I also decided I wanted to add a little bit of texture to the moon. So I got out my Versamark pad and some embossing powders. They were actually still out <laughs> from the other day. <laughs> I've got some some uh, mustard color, some orange color, and then some chunky bronze um, ultra thick powder that I put on there and heat those up with a low blow heat it tool. You know, it doesn't, I, I didn't put a lot of, of um, sticky glue on there. So I knew that the powder would, would blow away if I used the higher tint, the higher pressure heat tool. Now it's a little bit too light. So then I went back over it again with some of the oil pastel. That mustard color ended up, when I melted it, ended up to be way too light. Very different color than what it is in the jar. I need to remember that. <laughs> I keep forgetting that. So I'm touching up my moon, but now it's bumpy and it has a little bit of those uh, shaded shadowy areas in it like the moon does where the craters are and just continuing to do little details but this is pretty much the page finished except for I do put some stickers on there so I'll do that in a second I hope you've enjoyed this first in the series of 12 I think I'm going to uh, make a Facebook group for people who want to do moon art with me this year so I will put a link to that Facebook group in the description box below the video. If you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. You can come over and join that Facebook group if you'd like to. Um, I'll just link it. I am not sure what I'm going to call it, but it will, it'll be about the 12 full moons this year and what they're named. And you can share your art in there, stuff like that. I did color the stickers a little bit with uh, pastels because they were too white. It just just blazingly white on there so I did that then I sealed everything with another coat of the gel matte medium just to keep everything stuck on there so that's it for me for the first moon of the year bye bye <music>